guys to connect. I'm gonna start to talk for you because the time is running and we might not have enough time to finish. So, today live talk is about um, gear and importance to keep the gear in good shape. So, as you know, if you wanna fly good, um, you are picking the best possible wing for you, the most, the wing which is the most suitable for you and uh, adapted to your to your skills hopefully and to the places uh, you are flying at and this is what I was talking in this general talk about the, the things you, which you should have in mind when you are uh, thinking about improving your uh, flying and, and become a, a good pilot and I'm gonna put the camera here then you don't have a noise and uh, that's why I thought this is a, a, a good um, idea to talk a little bit more about the gear so in this talk I'm gonna just um, put general ideas on place and I would like to do another talk where I will um, speak more specifically about uh, that camera is jumping, I don't know why. Um, I, where I will speak more specifically about setting up of the harness, different types of harness for what, and, and I will have a special talk only for uh, dedicated to, uh, to harness. So, I hope for those guys uh, in Instagram you don't it's not disturbing you that I'm jumping but it's because I'm having two things same time going on my computer so don't worry it's just internet okay so now we are like still grounded I mean I'm in Austria and we are grounded till 1st of May our uh, Swiss uh, friends are flying already so making us super jealous and uh, we've got again super nice weather today uh, like this week passing over Austria and it's really painful to look at the sky in this shape but still we can use this time again um, constructive and send your wing to check you know like now all the all the repair stations like Paraclinic and and other other places in Austria and some places in in Germany and Switzerland and France I don't know but for sure in Austria they are reopening and there's um, making checks for your wings so this is a good idea to to use this time to um, get take care about about the right streaming of your glider some of you are um, thinking about making the checks by your own to, I don't know, save money or just for pure understanding how it works. Um, my advice would be don't do much on your own at the beginning. Uh, try to learn with somebody who, like, for sure, don't do it your own if you have no idea about this, how it works. Just to have um, an Excel sheet that somebody gave you and try to figure out how to measure and how to put things in place uh, is a tricky business because you might just get it totally wrong. That's why if you really, really want to, to, pr to do the glider checks on your own, then I would suggest you that you go and learn with the pro. If somebody is so keen to, to teach you, then, then just do it with them. Um, of course, sorry, one side note, you can comment uh, and ask questions and I'm gonna read uh, later um, and answer the questions. So don't worry if I'm done uh, reading it now and answering straight on, I'm gonna do it later. Okay, back to gliders. Why it is important, like, you, you have the glider and you fly it and why should I do a check like Germans are super strict every two years you have to send the glider to check uh, if you fly tandem you have to so no question there 
but if you don't have this regulation from um, from authorities why do you do it well this is very important because your glider was designed certain way to have a, a, a right angle of attack and right arch so if you don't um, okay um so then you sorry because i i was uh i i wasn't on instagram and now we have uh, the instagram stopped doesn't matter anyway so the glider has to have a, a correct arch and correct angle of attack most what is it happening that when you have a, a wing i will make my wing out of the tissue all right so when we have the wing okay you usually fly mostly on the on the a a little bit on the b and c is just for the stabilizing of the glider so when you fly plus you are accelerating a lot okay i will show to the facebook guys plus you're accelerating a lot then these lines are stretching like they are in stretch they're having a load on them and those lines are just they kind of supporting the profile but they don't have much load so with time those lines are shrinking okay and when your glider have a, a, a more hours plus you open the glider in the wet grass and when you take off the lines are like you know tear plus when you packing the glider you always like going with your hand on the line and it's it's doing a frag fraction and and the lines are losing a little bit of this protection if you have a thin lines if you have a thick lines you don't have that much of trouble but most of the time the lines which are having no cloth you will have a problem with that so what is happening uh, i'm trying to show both cameras that your glider will become more and more and more like this plus your glider will become more and more and more and more like this because when you fly this is our paraglider <laughs> from the tissue you have mostly loaded the middle of the wing the higher aspect glide uh, aspect ratio gliders which i was measuring uh, some of them have most of the load in this part less in this part and totally none in this and that parts are shrinking so what is happening when my glider was meant to be this way when it was designed i'm getting the wing which is looking like this and it doesn't fly same at all so this is why it's so super important to to send your wing to somebody like to to like verified a uh, checkpoint and let them check your glider because they were designed certain way and they fly good on this way if they are out of trim uh, they will not give you pleasure you will not have fun and they can be super dangerous actually last year during um, uh, Valdifasa Expo I was at the takeoff and there was this guy uh, like trying to take off and this glider was pulling all the time one side you know like he was taking off the glider was not really coming up and then it was pulling up and, and he the wing was going down first i thought like well this guy need to go and practice takeoffs but then i was like okay after second pull to the right and then third and fourth and like spins above his head i was like i think there is something wrong but you know you don't like this is the like this question should you say some somebody something on the takeoff or not and oftentimes if you say somebody something on the takeoff and he gonna hurt himself it will be your fault so i decided not to say anything and then this guy is taking off flying like pulling almost flying into the cable uh, car like to the chairlift somehow going out and i'm looking at the glider and he's like like 
you know, like you see that there's something really wrong with this glider. And I said to my friend at the takeoff, you know what? I have a bad feeling this guy, I don't want to be at the landing when he's going to land because as soon as he touched the brakes, he's going to he gonna stall it. It looks to me like the brakes are really too short. And this is the another, the side note, this is another thing. Many, many people, when they're trimming the gliders, they're forgetting to, to trim the, the brakes. Even some pros are forgetting about this. They think if it's enough to do A, B, C or A, B and, and then, you know, they take brakes, who cares? It's very important to trim your brake and I will come back to, to this in a second. So this guy flew out uh, and and you know I said like I don't want to be at the landing when when he he gonna land because I think he gonna crash and then I'm coming down to the landing and there is like huge panic and calls their back and trying to figure out and helicopter coming and this friend of my friends crashed and I was like luckily into the trees and I was like what was the glider and they say yeah this and this color I was like shit I've seen him taking off and this glider was not flying properly and you see <laughs> it's easy to avoid this kind of unnecessary risk taking when you fly if you keep your glider in trim so coming back to the brakes what is happening if you're if you shorten your brakes for yourself what is making um, like which you sh never should do because the brakes are set, you can make them longer, but don't shorten them. Because the brakes are designed longer, if they are feel long, they are designed this way. Because when we are flying, and you want to accelerate, the, the wing shape is changing. And now most of the gliders are getting this reflex profile. I, know, I hope you know what's reflex and if you don't know I'm gonna do another lecture probably about this so the back of the wing is keeping up a little bit like and then you need this length this all length of the brakes so uh, so the, the glider can get the shape which he needs to have on acceleration what is happening if you don't have the shape um, if you have the wing and 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 like you know the brakes are pulling down then every turbulence on the glider is producing collapses you know so if you are on acceleration and you get constant collapses this is like one of the signs that your brakes might be too short or you're going on the brakes when you're accelerating okay so this is about keeping the trimming trim of the glider another thing is the hours of your of your lines and if you are flying on the thin lines then you really should change them as often as it's uh, advised by manufacturer maximum plus 50 hours because if you are a heavy guy and you get a massive collapse and it's reopening you might reline the glider or even in the spiral or if you get a frontal this is so much load like sudden load of the wing on the on the lines of the wing that the glider might lose the lines or reline if like it's really not worth it to save the money and not change the lines when it's time to change the lines okay so these are the two most important things. Of course, you know, make sure that you check the porosity and the check station as 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 doing the tier tier test and everything because uh, some older gliders there, there was a, a series of certain materials. I don't want to tell now the brand because I don't remember exactly which was it. The porosity was okay, but you could break the glider like this, you know. So on the porosity was like, all good, you can fly. But then <laughs> the glider was breaking in your hands. So not only porosity is important but as, as well if your glider is still strong enough, it's not going to break. And this all checks are done by professionals in the check stations. So if you want to be safe in the air, why would you do it? You're yourself 
Okay, another thing which is super important is of course repacking of your rescue and making sure that your rescue didn't extend the um, its lifespan. Every rescue is 10 years or 24 repacks because some people are repacking the rescue two times a year so you're coming up to 24. So 24 repacks or 10 years, whatever comes first, okay? Especially if you through the, through the rescue, you should make a check if there is no, no breaks, like nothing broken on the rescue, no burns and, and everything. But if you didn't through the rescue, make sure you hang it out for 24 hours and repack. The best, of course, is that you do a pack uh, uh, course uh, which is provided by manufacturers of the rescue uh, which is provided by sc some sc paragliding schools is provided by some clubs you can have like a in Germany you even get the, the repacker certificate and then you're safe to go uh, it's very important as well to keep on a, an eye on the ma manufacturer um, manual because the rescues were certified the way they were packed as in manual. If you're going to pack a different way, they might open too fast and, and explode or open, don't, doesn't, well, they will not open. Okay, so make sure that you pack exactly as the manufacturer um, advise. Okay. Next thing, which is very important, uh, of course, change the elastics. Every time you were um, like get wet, uh, I don't know, you land um, on like your, your glider get uh, wet because you you ra landed and waited for retrieve and rained on you, or uh, you landed in the water on SIV, dry. Try your equipment properly through because it's going to mold other way and it's not going to work. Okay, another thing which is super important, these are carabiners. Every carabiner have its life, like a, a valid, validity time on it. Don't use carabiners which are um, uh, out of use time and don't use carabiners which are not certified for flying. I've seen, like, especially in hang gliding, you can see uh, people flying with some carabiners from uh, like a construction market or sailing. You know, this is made for different loads, for different way of usage. So make sure you have a carabiner made for paragliding, that it has enough strength because some people now for hike and fly they're putting these tiny screw carabiners on the risers and honestly if you use this and you want to save weight go to soft links i mean like this is so much more safe okay and make sure that the soft links as well have no no tears no fractures no like no no abuse okay and your carabiners, you check that there is no cracks in it. There is, you should not hit with carabiner on the ground, because it's it's like destroying the material and it's getting weaker. The same is for the for the for the carabiners, like the small triangled carabiners on the, uh, between the riser and the lines of your glider. Make sure they're closed. Make sure they are not extended the lifespan and that they are still in good shape, okay? Good. That said, we are coming from up, carabiners, to our harness. Uh, it's a good idea to check the structure of your harness inside um, because you might have some micro, micro uh, fractures, like micro breaks on your harness, uh, which um, or like sharp edges which um, like off offended like you know made some small cuts on the structure of the harness and then the load is 
like load, they, they wouldn't hold the same load as normally, okay? So it's a good time now to check all of that things and repair small, small um, broken parts, like, you know, I'm constantly breaking my cocoon, uh, if you do like, you know, this cool landing, like, and then you want to stand, sometimes you can scratch with the harness on the ground, same can happen on the takeoff, uh, or you fall, or uh, like some harnesses you, you can break, you know, just by using speed bar. If um, I see a lot uh, people flying in the air, uh, they are like, this is the pot, and you have like your feet, you can see the feet under the pot. <laughs> That's funny. I'm jump jumping <laughs> left and right. Okay, so you see the feet on the pot. So it means that you are pushing the heart, the, the like with your heel on this harness all the time. And if you have a shoe which have like sharp edges, you might break the pot. So this is a good idea now to to look at your pot and and check if if there is no uh, holes and repair them. And um, uh, for sure, it's a good moment if uh, to check your speed uh, bar, like s s like speed bar and the line of speed bar, because there is often time like if if you didn't install the line correct way, uh, the pulleys have like sharp edges, and your line is like on the sharp edge, and you don't see it because this is inside of your harness, and then one day you accelerate and boom you know, and you are in the air and you might be in some um, for some nice cross country or running competition and you have a no speed bar and uh, you might hate the wind and you want to use it or you want to be competitive and you have no speed bar so it might be even super dangerous so it's a good moment to check your line in the speed bar and as well the some some speed bars have this metal loops I already broke one of them in the air. Um, check if it's if it's there is no like abuses and like no 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 broken parts on this, you know. And uh, it's a good moment to just like hang in your harness. And if you fly, you feel that maybe something is uncomfortable. Maybe you should like adjust something. And now this is the time. To work on that. What is very important if you fly a pot harness, and I will come back to that uh, when we, when I will talk about harnesses specifically. Um, when you fly in the pot harness and you are in simulator, you have one position. Now, especially with this huge drag, uh, drag uh, back of the harness, okay. And it looks like perfect. Somebody make even photo of you, and it looks perfect like this. And then you take off and you are like this. Like this is the back, this is the front of the harness. Because the wind is hitting you like this, okay? You have the angle of attack, the wind is hitting you like this, and it's pushing a little bit up. So I try usually to set my harness a little bit down when I'm in simulator, and that's pushing me back in the in, in the flat position. And that's that's a perfect shape for, for the wind go around you. Okay, so harness, rescue, uh, glider, check. Uh, another thing what is important about the gear is um, seating harness, pot harness. I will come back to this in my harness discussion, so I don't want, I don't want to talk about this now. Um, but I want to talk about the gliders. Um, when to change a glider? And this question comes a lot. And um, my advice is to you uh, be honest with yourself and really check how many hours you fly. And where, like, ask yourself where are you gonna fly, how much I'm gonna fly, and um, how I feel with the glider which I have right now, okay? Because if you don't feel like 100% uh, comfortable with the glider you have right now, it might be for the two reasons. One reason is that this glider is already too hot for you. 
The other my, reason might be that your harness is wrong for the glider and for you and it's too wakey. And um or wrong set like it's it's wrong set it for you. So there are two options. Uh, first check your harness and and improve the position in the harness and check if then uh, you don't feel more comfortable with the wing or you maybe should step down with the wing or check another model of the same uh, on the same um, certification range because many wings are not same like many wings in A and B and C class and even in D class some of them are super stable and some of them are super sensitive so the best is to check for yourself like go and test and and find out which glider is your handling your feeling okay but for now okay will be difficult i hope they will reopen the 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 test centers and you will be able to do that um another thing is okay I'm, let's say I fly a low B glider and uh, should I jump on C glider? And this is a, the, the, the big question. How many hours? Where are you gonna fly? And um, how you feel with the wing? If you fly a ton of hours on your low A, B or B glider and you feel super comfortable with that, actually super, like actually almost bored, uh, like small collapses doesn't stress you a lot at all and um, you flew with this glider in the mountains and you plan to fly in the mountains and you are like ambitious improving cross-country pilot okay feel free maybe you can try some high B low C gliders middle C gliders uh, maybe start uh, not change the, the wing immediately in the spring when the conditions are the strongest maybe start to like when you want to switch to another glider wait for a little bit later in the season when the the air is small calm everything is bigger and more comfortable and then start with flying some places which are familiar to you and where the conditions are um, um, more soft okay and then you can move up into the mountains. Um, if you don't fly a lot, and um, but your glider is already two years, let's say, okay, or three years or four years, and it's like feels like time to change, and all my bodies are changing. You know, don't go under pressure of the team colleagues, like club colleagues or your flying part bodies. You know. Uh, Trust me, if you go the same category to the newer model, this newer model will fly much better than your old one because the technology is going ahead and you will have still a, a beautiful passive uh, security on your glider and much more performance. So double win, you know, you will be feel, yeah, you, you feel safe. Uh, you have the passive safety and so much more fun because you can do so much more with this glider Okay, so that's my advice uh, about when and uh, changing wings If you have any questions on that you can uh, drop them uh, For the wings Yeah, oh and the one more question which is coming a lot is in um, which size should I fly? Well, um, it's you should read uh, manuals for the gliders for sure, because uh, every glider is different, and the best the the like the the guys who tested the glider know them the best, and uh, this is where you get the best advice about the the wing. Mostly it's advised for A, B, C gliders to fly in the middle of the range. Like this you can, uh, you know, put uh, warmer clothes and get, take some ballast. And if the conditions get smoother, you can always drop some ballast. 
and um, you still have a place if uh, it's a little bit warmer. I like to fly my gliders in the upper range and like this I have like my more, more space down to you know I'm really light so my comp gliders I usually fly um sorry my battery is dying my comp gliders I usually fly pretty light and I need to take a lot of ballast to uh, to be able to to load them and the pure reason for that is that I just feel so much um, safer with a bigger wing and I have uh, uh, like better safety performance uh, wing and this um, carrying around ballast is uh, just the price you pay for that. Uh, for sure if you go to fly on Grenta and you have to carry 17 liters of ballast up it's no fun. That's why I have second wing for big mountains and light harness and and like this, uh, I, if I have to walk up uh, and go cross country, I still can. Um, yeah, the best as well is how you feel with the glider. It's when you get your new new wing and you have some safe conditions, not too turbulent, but still not too smooth. Uh, because you want to feel the wing, what 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 is doing, you load full like on maximum weight, and you just put down the water, and you stop, and you feel it, and you put down, and you feel it, and then when you find the sweet spot where you feel like oh, the glider is the best now, uh, it feels the best, then stop, land, and scale you, and then you know in which um, on which uh, takeoff weight. Uh, you would like to fly the wing. Alrighty, so questions. Um. Okay, going through the the Instagram now. Oh, shoot. Okay. The Patoe Patoe Peralta uh, is asking, will you be allowed to fly soon there? Yes, uh, apparently in Austria we can fly from 1st of May legally. So I'm really, really looking toward. Finally, I hope the weather will work with us. I'm scrolling, scrolling. Okay. Do you have any questions about the gear? If you don't have any questions. As always, you can um, write me write me questions, and I, I will answer. And uh, this actually this live is because is uh, based on the questions of one of uh, um, viewers, and it was a really cool cool one. Uh, like this, I'm more um, inspired. Um, what is interesting to you, what to talk about. Alrighty, so um, next live will be about harnesses, differences in harnesses and um, which harness is right for me and um, yeah, this is the my opinion, the most important thing. Like Glider is not so important like the harness. <laughs> so, thank you for watching and see you next week. Bye, have a nice week and nice to see you.